Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and I'm here with you today, September the 6th, 2023. And we have 14 learners in the podcast. Welcome, welcome. I hope you all are learning and growing and building your brand and making this a practice that's going to really be sustainable to you over the course of your career. Some of you are new entrepreneurs. Some of you are thinking about becoming an entrepreneur and you are right where you need to be. So if you need business consultation services, don't hesitate to email me at scales to success LLC at gmail.com. That's S C A. L-E-S-T-O-S-U-C-C-E-S-S-L-L-C at gmail.com and the information will be in the description box below or you can give us a call at 330-956-0511. It is now time for you to brand your desires and your passions. So in today's session, I want to talk uh, about a text that I received and uh, Jasmine is a avid Chronicles of a Nonprofit listener, as well as an entrepreneur, small business entrepreneur that I am very, very proud of. So Jasmine from Colorado, thank you so much for being here with us. You were here with us, I believe, back when we were Emerald Mystery Radio, and you were, you know, talking with us on some of our extended topics there. And that was many years ago. So Jasmine writes, it is a pleasure to be one of your entrepreneurs. I've listened to all your Chronicle podcasts. Some I've ha- some I have caught in live and you give good points to consider to those becoming a new and upcoming leader slash entrepreneur. My question for you today is in podcast 38, you said to be transparent in your business. Otherwise, people will find a crack in your structure. And how do you find the nerve to tell others about your failures? Thank you again for putting so much information into the Chronicles playlist. Please call me soon. Jasmine. All right. So, 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 so. How do I find the nerve to tell others about my failures? Well, you know, like we said, Jasmine, yesterday, failure is a part of the season. You know, there's going to be times where we recognize, and I look at the season of fall as one of those times that I would recognize going over my books, going over some of my client base, You know, sometimes I look at different programs I put out over the course of the year, and I say to myself during this time, during this season, was I successful or did I fail? So many of the times I would have to say, as long as I gave it my 100% all, and even if it came to fruition or it didn't, if I was not the initial factor in the equation, then if I showed up, I was a success. That's how I look at it. So when I talk about my failures, it is something that is personal. I try not to extend that out too much uh, because people can use that failure as a weakness. However, what I will do is be transparent and honest, okay? And like I said in the podcast yesterday, it is vitally important that we be real to our client base because they can find this information out very, very easy. We are living in a technological world where anything can be found out, so you might as well be transparent. But... When we talk about failures, me, myself, personally, I look at my successes first. And then I say to myself, how can I 
did I do my ultimate best at that particular situation or scenario? And if I did, whether it failed or succeeded, if I showed up again, I'm a success. And I want my entrepreneurs to think that way. It's not having a big ego. It's not having, you know, and I'm a better than all others attitude. It's none of that. It is self-confidence. It is a merging of building your brand, knowing who you are and putting that brand out there in an effective way. So if you're constantly looking at your failures, you're never going to be able to succeed. Um, so what I do when I go back and look over the areas that I could have been stronger in, I realize that the very next time this happens, this mistake will be a learning experience. So that's kind of how I face it. And I want you to kind of look at that, Jasmine. I want you to pay attention to the way that you empower yourself in your weakest moments. Because that weakness can be the very thing that drives your business to failure. So just recently, I had a wonderful organization that came to me and needed assistance and was really there for the consultations, you know, did everything they needed to do, but just didn't have the stamina to keep going. And so they used excuses and roadblocks to prevent that. And then, you know, I could have taken that as a personal thing, but I didn't because everyone has their reasons for what they do, especially if I know I showed up and did the best that I could do. And then I had another organization that extended themselves to me, granted me funds to help support our community. And the community didn't show up, you see. So we have to look at the factors that are vital to the growth and the success of the program before we take accountability for the failure. So entrepreneurs, that's something I want you to really, really consider when you're going through your program, when you're looking at how things are coming together, ask yourself, were your hours of operation opened at the time? Did you lose money while doing something else? Or did you gain money by closing shop and being virtual? Like you have to know how to strategize in 2023 because a lot of things have changed over the course of business development since the pandemic, right? So with these changes, we have to diversify. We have to become more at peace with how we're going to run our our, our enterprise, Okay, we're going to have to know when we have to move and change focus. And you should always have three to four different things happening that is connected and tied to the things that you do. So you take your mission statement and then you say to yourself, "Okay, uh, this is what I choose to do. And uh, in this mission statement, I can create How can I create at least three to four income streams that are going to be tied, connected, and true to the mission? So I'm going to give you some things that you're going to want to consider when putting together your mission statement for your business and saying to yourself, this is something that I can do. Always be true with yourself, Jasmine. Do not try to impact your business based upon what is the hottest trend in the business industry today, okay? Um, I felt that community, community was vital to my area of service. So as I'm supporting the community, I am putting a guideline into perspective where 
employment is needed, volunteer services are needed, housing is needed, and whatever else I'm doing now, okay? And in that, the mission statement is still fulfilling itself. It's still growing the brand. It's growing. So when we diversify our product or our service, then it makes it better for our client base, okay? And make sure that it is steady. Make sure that you're doing exactly what you need to do in order to diversify, you know, whether you need to go online and do a website or whether you need to be in brick and mortar, whether you need to expand and collaborate with another organization. You know, these are the things that you want to sit at the drawing board with your business developer and create that, that consortium. You need to know which way you're going and then expanding into new markets. Okay. It's okay to step out on faith. I'm stepping out right now. I have, um, I'm going to be mentioned at a board meeting today with a company that is a multi-million dollar industry that deals with solar technology. And we are going to be collaborating and connecting the dots to that experience just to see how it could benefit us. It may not be something that I go with. However, it is something I'm learning. It is something about manufacturing. It's the new technological aspects of how the community is growing. And what better way than to have a set of opportunities available in our community that is solar. It's the best way to go because that is the new technology. So expanding the market and moving that marketplace to a position where you can feel comfortable is what it's about. And then focusing on your customer, okay? Seeing what it is that they want, prioritizing the excellent customer service, the business that creates the loyal customer, the customer that's going to continue to come back and give you the accolade that you need without any script, without any uh, detriment to your name. Because one thing that I want entrepreneurs to understand is the world is yours. And if the world is yours, Jasmine, you do not have to go and criticize someone else to make you look good in your business. You just, you just don't have to. And if you look at entrepreneur practices, you're going to see that it is just as vital to respect the other competitor, competitive business that's out there trying to stand on their own, feed their family, grow their generational wealth, and make sure that the community is serviced. So you want to give them that accolade too, but you want to stay in your lane and you want to focus on what you're doing. If you're too far over here with Betty Crocker, then Betty Crocker is going to have your attention. So you might as well be over there helping Betty Crocker do her thing. <laughs> you feel me? So that's what I want you to understand. So so, so um, focusing on that customer is vital. And then and don't be afraid to embrace digital opportunities. Digital opportunities, Facebook pages, community websites, collaborative uh, videos, how-to videos. These are things that have kept me afloat when I had nothing else to do. I threw a video out there and I received calls from strangers that I didn't even know were in a position to even look at what I was creating. So these are valuable, important stepping stones to the entrepreneur in today's world. And then, so embrace that technology and then invest in what the employee or the um, client or customer is going to want. I just met a wonderful woman on Facebook who has this, you know, item establishment where she makes cups and jewelry and all these cool artifacts. 
So I want to go and visit her company and we're going to see exactly what she does because I'm going to see if I can put it on the Chronicles of a Nonprofit and get her point of view of what it means to be an entrepreneur online and in person in 2023, where most people don't even realize that the world has opened (laughs) and then collaborate with other businesses. And that's where I got, now you don't have to collaborate and streamline with the same competitors. Okay. So if I am a Etsy store and I'm building my Etsy store, I would not want to be connected to another person building the same Etsy brand that is their specific because it's too unique, it's too creative, and it's too involved because now everything you talk about could be duplicated very, very fast. But what I would do is connect with other uh, organizations and companies that are small-based that have the opportunity to provide clientele to me. So like, for instance, I have a client base that's all about entrepreneurship. So what better way for me to go and meet someone who has a store? Because number one, I'm not a competitor. I am just someone who may become a client or may become an advertiser for the organization I'm going to see. So now what I do is I become the generator to what the store may need. So now I become her outlet. I can come and put on a podcast for her and share her experience and how to get in contact with her. So there's a collaboration that's there. So you want to build those type of uh, business relationships for your Rolodex in case you may need someone. However, there are people that you just don't want to connect with because they've shown you who they are. And if you're a small business and someone's trying to take over the business that you have worked very hard to pursue, it's very amazing how they would not be a competitor for you. So you're going to want to make sure that you remember, uh, forgive, but don't forget, okay? Because that very thing that you forget could be the very thing that could destroy your entire enterprise. So, and then seek out funding. Talk to people about believing in you, you know? Do it through grant writing, or you could do it through sponsorships, or you can do it through innovative investments where you give a percentage of your income back because others have believed in you. Now you're going to believe in yourself and you're going to promote yourself. And this is how you do it. So with that funds, with those funds, with that money, you go out in the world and you get your advertisement costs paid. You hire your employers, your employees, your independent contractors, or however you're going to set up your organization. Um, You create opportunities for people to bring the flow of service and the flow of clientele to you. And once you do that, you purchase your equipment, you or rent your equipment, or provide the opportunity for the internet, Facebook, marketplace, wherever you want to go, to find the cheapest way to be in a better position with your equipment. So if you're a landscaper, is it feasible to pay $200 for a used item on a Facebook marketplace? Or should you just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up what you need in order to be able to make and maintain the client services you need? Because what's going to happen is you don't know how many more uses this one piece of equipment you spent $200 on is going to last. But at Home Depot, if you add another 50 to it, you're going to be able to maintain it and get a warranty. You know, (laughs) something you can write off at the end of the year. These are strategies that one can use when thinking about how not to fail in a business. 
how to look at your successes and continue to grow. And then learning from your mistakes when you do fail, because there are going to be times, Jasmine, that these situations are just going to come about. You're not going to know what to do. And that's when you, when you, and this is what I was taught in college. When you don't know what to do, you do nothing. So you'll say to your client, can I get back to you? That's a really good question. That's a really good point of view. Um, can I get back to you in a couple of days on that? I'm going to check with either my board of directors or I'm going to go and do some research on that. And I'm going to see what is the best alternative for our situation right now. Because people are going to bring to you some of the craziest things that you've never been able to think about because you don't think that way until it's there. So, and then stay adaptable. Get into the comfort zone of your business. And one thing I've had to learn with the Skills to Success LLC project, working with one of my biggest uh, customers, client, uh, client partners, the Youngstown Community Center, it is a great amount of things you're going to have to become adaptable with. If I had not become adaptable, the Youngstown Community Center never would have be, been able to create out of its origination the Operation Hope 22 program, which is a housing-based program that helps individuals to get a second chance on life. You don't have to worry about credit checks. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, uh, getting your credit and, and, and all that stuff. You know, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about paying your lights, gas, and water because all that's included. So in that program, not only does the Operation Hope come out of that, Serenity Sisters come out of that even more because the adaptability. Okay, the need of service, the thing that we need to do in order to make a community function and second chance opportunities for individuals, you know, um, just helping them, training them. You know, we have a commercial kitchen that is available and it is open. And training people on how to go get a safe, safe serve license is one of the things that we do as well. So if you're interested in starting your own business and, you know, kitchen manufacturing of some sort, barbecue sauce, um, drinks, healthy, nutritious drinks. We have the bottling company manufacturing items as well as belief in yourself. You have to believe in you in order to make this come to fruition. And then look at the value of what your product and service is going to provide. All of these things are going to help sustain any area that would prevent you from being a failure. If you do these few areas of thought that we've suggested today here at Chronicles of a Nonprofit, you're going to find that you will have less failures because you're learning, but you will have mistakes that you can learn from. So Jasmine, I hope that's helpful to you. Thank all the entrepreneurs who are in the podcast. You're in the building. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. So please send your emails and your phone calls and your texts, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All of that information is in the description box below. Empower yourself today to be the greatest version of who you are know you can be because you know yourself more than anyone in this world. Peace, blessings, love, and light, and we will see you next time.